thank you for watching. Welcome to episode 32. Um, in this episode, we will take a look at climbing the mast, which is something I had to do a number of times in the last couple of weeks, and I've gotten pretty good at it. I'm also uh, happy to report that I've gotten some other work done that was needed to correct deficiencies noted during the trip over here. We'll put it that way. Nothing killer, but little things that really made life harder when I was underway. Address some of them. Ate some strange fruits, um, saw some strange bird behavior, went in the town a few times to, into Cancun and uh, to see the non-touristy side. I, mean, I swear I'm the only white man that goes in some of the places I've been going. And I, I'm, I'm kind of liking it here. So Cancun's a pretty good place to hang out. I mean, well, a guy could live here, no problem. And I, I can see why some Americans choose to live here in Mexico all the time. <clears throat> so in the episode, we're primarily going to go get the radar down, <coughs> demobilize the the old auto helm equipment, which was abandoned in place by the previous owner. Those are big jobs. Tackle a lot of topside woodwork. So um, I hope you enjoy. Um, look forward to your comments. Thanks, guys. My flip flop broke. This pair. I bought in Abu Dhabi for 10 dirham about four years ago, so I suppose it served its life well. <clears throat> Laundry day, for sure. And it's a demob, the old steering equipment day. Okay, so in general, look at the end of that piston there. That little piston dealy is supposed to operate the wheel. I don't know how the hell it works. I mean, there's a device that tells the motor what course we need to be on, and that motor, which is behind it, the black thing, hard to see, I know, it operates the this ram, which is connected to the steering linkage, blah, 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 blah. And this is what I found when I bought the boat. See? The previous owner just freaking cut cables, not that, just like this one from some communications antenna behind it. It's like, what the hell? What the same hell was that? So, I'm going to take all this shit out of here. This, those four brackets don't need to be there. The wood doesn't need to be there. The ram doesn't need to be there. The big motor hanging on the back. If I get rid of all that junk, it improves storage space. And it gets the weight off the boat. And by God, I just don't want this shit that other people abandoned on the boat. carbon steel stuff okay so chunk number one I'm gonna salvage those two stainless steel screws and the rest is goes to trash good lord this fucking made out of old two by fours what kind of Beverly Hillbilly installed you you piece of shit Fuck you auto helm Apologize for the bad language. Okay, with the water heater gone, and now the auto helm equipment gone, the major demobilization item needed yet is the radar. The radar had been uh, cut off at the wires, of course, like everything else in the boat, but the radar antenna was still up on top of the mast, and I wanted to get that thing down. Primarily because it's ugly and I don't want it. Secondly is because, frankly, the it fouls some of the running rigging. You know, things will get tangled on that and I needed to get it down. Well, I'd love to tell you that I love climbing the mast, but that's just not true. I don't think I'm a big guy for climbing masts because I really don't like being up there at heights. I'd love to tell you that I was just hanging loose like this the whole time watching the marina and looking around and enjoying the view, but really most of the time I was clutching the mast, the mast in fear, looking down, you know, and it reminded me of the Shrek movie. Shrek, I'm looking down! So I used an assortment of gear that I had on board. I don't have the proper climbing gear, okay? The, the bosun's chair was designed to be a bosun's chair, but everything else I kind of made with the uh, equipment on hand. That's just a sheet block. You can see the grips on it to hold the line. 
that's what I used to pull myself up and I had another block up at the top to make what farmers would call an old-fashioned block and tackle. You know, it reduces the force I need to pull myself up and with those paws on it right there, it, it holds the line so I can let go when I'm done. But at the end of the day, the radar did come down. See what's inside the radar antenna. Okay. Well, I was kind of hoping for bars of gold. I don't see anything made of gold. Well, given the price of stainless steel and brass, it's no surprise that I salvage whatever I can off of any job. The remainder of the radar unit I just threw in the trash and uh, this bracket I'm going to keep. The bracket probably won't serve any function for me except I can use it as barter material perhaps somewhere down the line. Back in on it just so it has higher barter. Well that flashlight was a pretty important piece of kit on the way down here at night because otherwise I couldn't even read the compass. So I went to an auto parts store and bought some little LED red lights and installed them and they work pretty darn good. So I think we're all set now. Temp Mod 27. And that's the main cell all the way up. So if you wanted full sail, that's what it looks like. And it's a perfect way to see the tears at the reefing points. So there is a tear at the first reefing line. You can see there are two other reefing lines hanging down. I removed the third one when it ripped. And you see the third grommet, that would be a reefing point as well. And, and those reefing points, they bear the full upward force of the sail when you're reefed to that reef. So you, if, that, if you're reefed to one reef, as that's the first reef, then those three little lines are bearing all the damn force and the sail couldn't handle it. You can see it tore right at the grommet. And you go up to the second reef, same thing. So the sail is 42 years old, so let's not kid ourselves. We're not trying to make it new, we're not trying to make it beautiful, but I am gonna to try to get those patched just to limp on down to Guatemala and I'll probably buy a new mainsail there or in the DR. We're gonna to have to do it. We can stitch it up, we can put patches on it, like you see at the end of the reef heavy heavy stitching and reinforcement we'll do something like that at these patches and i'll have her do it at all the reefing points so i can reef with confidence i don't want to be afraid to reef anyway let's get the sail down Okay, so it doesn't look that hard, does it? Just tucking the sail down, and it's not so hard to do when you're at the dock, and it's not windy out. But when the boat is rolling around and it's pretty strong winds, this can be a bit of work. <clears throat> First, there's a risk of falling overboard, so you got your harness on. Second, you're building up this giant pile of canvas that has to be secured to the boom. Or it's just going to blow around. So it's this is a bit of work. Since I had the halyard out, it was a good time to get Pugsley off the deck. So Pugsley is the name of the dinghy, and I wanted to get it off the boat so I could do some painting on the top side of the boat. I'm going to move Pugsley to the davits at the back of the boat. Okay, well, this is the boom, and you can see the boom, the bottom of the main cells attached to these little plastic things, whatever I call them, I think they call them trucks or what I don't know. You can, I'm sure there's a sailing term for them that makes them cost a hundred times more. They're just little plastic cars that ride in the slot. It looks to me like all we really gotta do is release this fitting from the sail. Break the tension on that wherever that goes. That's the out haul. If I could remove the pin then the sail will be free to slide forward. 
the stainless steel car would remain on the boom. And then I think we just pull the damn thing off. The mast, the forward edge of the sail is run the same way. So you can see the forward edge of the sail is on the same kind of little cars. See. So, boy, it'll help a lot better if those are made of bronze or something instead of plastic shit. But that's just the way it is. I think all sails and almost all boats are that way. Okay, let's get this sail off of here. When I first was looking at this boat during the sea trials, that's how everything seemed to be. Just gunked up and uncared for, unloved. I think this ought to be clean, clean, clean and shiny. Or maybe greasy, greasy, greasy. I don't know which. I think most sales, sailors say don't grease this stuff, but I tend to like grease. I don't know. Don't know what's right, what's wrong. Sometimes we just go with our gut feelings. Okay, we'll put the camera down. Get these damn things out. Come on, come on, cars. Get out of there. And it's hanging up on this line, I can see that. I don't know the, don't know the function of that line. So, that line goes here. So I think I need to just uncleat it. No, no, I might regret that. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Well, you can't work on the boat non-stop. For one thing, you have to go get groceries. And the second thing, you have to sometimes buy materials for the boat. And um, I'm looking ahead at future jobs and things I want to do. So I've been looking for electrical shops and I could buy AC electrical and DC electrical components. Also some paint and some varnish. And I use these transports to get around. So these are ubiquitous. So this is how you get around in Cancun. Most tourists don't ride them. These are generally for locals only. There's the bus stops are ill-defined. You just have to know where the bus stops are and you have to kind of figure out which bus goes which place. But I can always find breakfast and I always marvel at the Volkswagen Beetles in the street because I love VW Beetles. <laughs> Hey, so being a cruiser means you are doing boat maintenance in exotic locations and that also means you have to go buy things in exotic locations and it's a lot harder. More fun, but it's harder. This is where I went and get my paint mate. Got two liters for 15 bucks and uh, tinted them perfectly for me. Under the steering wheel is the engine push button and that's what happens when you push it sometimes nothing and it makes you think well you got a dead battery but you really don't what you have is a bad switch so that's the new switch we bought ABB who to thunk we'd found an ABB store <laughs> Hey, here we go. Enjoy it. It's your last chance. Anyhow. And some days the weather is just so beautiful that I just play the ukulele. Try to get better at it. Thank you. 
And if you're gonna go after something in the water, you better do it within the day of dropping it because it'll quickly become covered with silt and you're gonna find it. Yeah, the first time I had milk this way was uh, <laughs> way back in the Navy when uh, on the submarine. And sometimes, even though you shake it vigorously, sometimes when you uh, pour it out, it comes out like cottage cheese. At least it did back then. Yeah, just another memory of the submarine days. This is how I saw <clears throat> the gentleman at the fruit stand do it. Just peel it like a potato. I thought, hell, I can figure that out. So what I do know is that once it's inside, the seeds, you just swallow them. So you see, it's like all damn seeds. But it's full of water, so if you were starving and thirsty and dying of thirst in a desert, you could uh, absolutely eat this. Yeah, but I think not so much the uh, the green skin part. That's the seeds are very juicy. Good taste, actually. Not sure that I want to make this a steady part of my diet. I mean, it's, it's under the heading of difficult food. <laughs> and sometimes in the evening, after all the tourist boats have come back, and the music is lingering but not too loud, and I got about an hour of sunlight left. And I've already eaten my dinner. Sometimes I'll do a little job. Kind of uh, in project space, we call this level of effort. The kind of job where you don't just do it and be, you're done with it. It's, it takes wa a while. So let's look at the before. This is what the teak rail looks like in many places. It's black. Not good. And it looks like it's soft wood underneath that. I don't know the condition. So we need to scrape it down to bare wood, like that part right there. And sand it and make it pretty. And then, you know, grind all the shit off the stainless steel parts. Lord knows what kind of sealants are on that to stop a leak, obviously. But, I'm trying to make it look like that. No, that's the option. In this case, we're going to do a design change. Right here, right now. This is not so much scraping the wood. This is actually making a change to the design. Why? Because I just want to. So, that's okay. So, here's the problem. <clears throat> the problem is, this piece of wood is physically in contact with this uh, bottom of the stay of the shroud Which makes it impossible Impossible I say to treat the wood on the back side You know and it makes it impossible to deal with leaks and fix a caulking on this side on the shroud So the solution for me is we're gonna fucking Get that damn plug out Okay So now you can see down the hole and it's just a big old beautiful Phillips head screw for which I'm prepared. And so we just gotta take that puppy out and get busy. And you think, oh my goodness, it's teak. Well, tough shit. So th this is a design flaw. I mean the people who did this thought they were doing a good thing. The wood is pretty, these things are pretty, but when they put it this close to the shroud, I mean, come on, I mean, come on. You know it's impossible. You're creating a future headache. Make a cut. It's hard enough. I 
I wish someone could take a video of me taking videos because this is actually pretty damn awkward. <laughs> I've got the camera basically in my crotch almost. <laughs> Well, sometimes I screw it up, and sometimes I goof up that woodworking. And in a few minutes here, I'll get back to work because I've got a beautiful day, and we'll do a little more of this uh, teak rail behind me. I'm about three quarters of the way done with all the teak top side. Then we'll be happy when that's done. And then we're gonna paint the top side. We're gonna paint over this gel coat with a nice shiny cream colored paint. <sighs> trying to make the boat uh, look better. I'm trying to make her look like a good old girl. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm hot on the heels of this episode. Within a day or so, I'm going to get on another episode regarding the work list. I wanted to catch up on what was actually going on, but the uh, work list is always in my mind, even when I'm doing other odd jobs uh, that don't require a lot of brain power. So the main focus for me is uh, getting this boat to Guatemala because that's a good place to do dry storage work or dry haul out work when you bring the boat up put it up in dry storage and you can do work without worrying about flooding your boat and uh the next episode again just within a day or so is going to be out and it's going to show you what i have listed for all the work i need I have photographs of what i'm planning to do we'll make that its own special episode and i do appreciate all your comments because i'm excuse me i'm looking forward to comments on these it's easy to sit here and think I know what's right and what's wrong, and but we're all capable of making mistakes, just like we're all smart people, so pretty important to me. So take care, everybody. Bye.